Hello everybody, we're taking another doggy walkie and uh, we've got Bear with us. Uh, in case you don't know who Bear is, he is a Belgian Malinois Labrador mix. Uh, he's a male, he's about 14 months old. Then we have Kevin, our little super mutt. Probably, obviously, a Chihuahua mix of some kind, possibly, I don't know. I'll have to do the DNA, everybody asks, he's adorable. More importantly, he's one of the best dogs I've ever had. Just really, a really, really even-tempered small dog. And he doesn't have any of the anxiety that small dogs are known for. So I'm very, very blessed. And then we have Gigi, our senior lady, who um, is actually, strangely enough, she's actually a Belgian Malinois mixed with Airedale, uh, Border Collie, um, and hold on, there's a dog coming. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Kevin, come on, you guys, come on. Bear wants to play always. Heal, no play. And, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, Gidget, Border Collie, and, uh, Boston Terrier. So Airedale Terriers, if you're unfamiliar with them, they were used during World War I, uh, by the military. And, um, they were replaced later by the German Shepherd. Um, just because I, from what I understand, they found German Shepherds to be a lot more trainable and willing to please, which... Airedales are known for their stubbornness. So, but they're much larger than Gidget is. Airedales are the king of the terriers, and Gidget is only about 30, 34, 33 pounds of uh, pure uh, confidence, loyalty, and lack of fear. I mean, this dog is so tough, I can't even tell you. She's 16 years old. She's our granny. And uh, <clears throat> she's uh, pretty much a 90-year-old in dog years. So she's on constant pain management. And uh, Bear, hold on. Left side heel. Wait, car. It's kind of hard to hold the phone and record when you've got a lot of obstacles. So I'm trying to take you guys on dog walks, but that's a little challenging when I'm walking three dogs with one hand and a phone recorder. <sighs> Anyways, but yeah, so she's 16 years old, which is a 90 year old in human years. Kevin, wait, wait. Good boy. And, uh, anyways, um, 90 years old in human years. So she's on pain management, constant pain management. Her health is excellent. For the most part, her liver levels have been off a little bit, but, uh, you know, I don't want to put her through any excessive, uh, treatment for a dog her age. You know, she can't live forever, unfortunately, although I wish she could live as long as I do. Um, and, uh, I want her to be comfortable and I want her to be happy until her time comes to cross the rainbow bridge so anyways but her hips are great um she has arthritis in her spine severe arthritis in her spine and her heart is very good so it, that's what it's just about pain management for her 
spy. And uh, yeah. Just so dogs of all ages. I also have Louie at home, but I'm not walking him right now because I can walk four dogs at once, but it's challenging uh, to hold a phone and do that. And also, sometimes I just don't walk, want to because, well, actually, that's not right. Louie doesn't want to. Louie is not a walker. If you're looking for a dog to be your buddy, your companion to take adventures with and walk for hours and hike and all that. Louie, who is an American Cocker Spaniel, is not that dog. Cocker Spaniels were bred to be companion dogs and the English Cocker Spaniel is a much uh, hardier dog in, in the sense that they have still retained some of their field properties, you know, qualities of, um, <clears throat> of, being, out, of being able to work, you know, and, and, and and be more active but the american variety uh which has you know the shorter muzzle uh they're a little bit smaller uh also um you know they were bred more for just basically companionship so uh, from what i don't know how many working american cocker spaniels there are but i certainly know there are are plenty of show variety or descendants of the show variety American Cocker Spaniels and they are not workhorses. They do not want to they do not want to hike all day, walk all day, anything. They want to play with their ball. They want to romp around the house and they want to just basically be by your feet. Literally. He is the kind of dog Louie is the kind of dog that will just it's hysterical. He'll come and plop down right at your feet like a foot warmer. So, and I had a rescue Cocker Spaniel like Louis is, um, named Henry, Henry, excuse me, years before. And Henry was much the same way. Only difference was Henry was not a lunatic like Louis is and much more mentally stable. Uh, <laughs> that's an understatement. And, um, but Henry was just a dream dog, very easy going. I mean, if you wanted a companion dog, that's, that was Henry. And Henry, um, Henry, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Wow, I'm getting old. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. What's the difference? I can't even, I was saying something about Cocker Spaniels. I can't remember. But anyways, whatever. Yeah, Cocker Spaniels, they are really, really... Oh, I, I okay. I think I remember. Um, the, the they're, they're great companion dogs. The only downside is that, well, at least with Louie, is they... Uh, some of them are prone to anxiety. And... Um, and certainly Louis has that. Henry didn't. So, for example, if there's any loud noise or anybody knocking on the door, I mean, he will alert bark, but he will not stop alert barking. It, it becomes very much a nuisance. And most people, I believe, would have gotten rid. I mean, if it weren't for me, I don't think, I think Louis would have been rehomed many, 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 many times, um, because he's very cute, you know, some people find that look cute, not everybody cares for a curly dog, um, or a cocker spaniel, you know, but some people find that look cute, and I think he would have been rehomed many, many times, because he's adorable, you know, he's a cute face, but he's just, his, his temperament, uh, he's great up until the point that guests come over or a dog walks by or the mailman drops off your mail or, you know, you name it. He just loses his mind, loses his mind. So anyways, yeah, that's Louie for you. Louie's not here tonight. So that, like I said, he likes to play with his ball and, you know, take it easy. And um, that's another thing. Cocker Spaniels are prone to having heart problems because they were the number one 
family dog in America for, for decades. Decades. I think that ended in, what, the, the 80s or something? Um, but for decades, they were the number one family dog in America. And uh, as a result of that, you know, what happens when a dog becomes popular? You know, they become bred and overbred and backyard bred. And dogs that maybe shouldn't be bred are bred for profit, you know, and, um, and that creates inbreeding, it creates bad breeding, poor breeding, uh, you know, it, you know, y you start compromising the integrity of the animal when you're merely breeding for profit. So if you, instead of looking at, okay, does the dog have the look? Does the dog have the temperament? Does the dog have, you know, um, the, the you know good nerves? Does the dog have a stable mindset? Does the dog have does the dog have good hips? Does the dog have a good heart? Uh, does the dog have any genetic predis predispositions that we know about and can test for? Um, instead of you know when you're breeding for profit only. You don't care about that. You care about, is your dog sellable? And what's sellable? What's sellable is, is this cute? And does the dog take a, a good picture? Or the puppy, rather. Does the puppy take a good picture? And frankly, what puppy doesn't take a good picture? So it's very easy to, you know, breed a popular breed of dog. And I'm sorry to inform you guys, but um, just because, you know, whatever it may be, poodle, cocker spaniel, German Shepherd, whatever breed is of the moment, Belgian Malinois, not every dog is suitable for breeding. You may love your dog, but it doesn't mean it's a good breeding candidate. So you, you just, people need to be honest with themselves and, um, and, and the, the, the consequences are huge because, you know, this is eugenics. This is, this is selective, selective breeding you know this is this is as if we're taking humans and you know mating certain people together for certain attributes you know it, it, it's all it, it's not natural and um, it can create an animal that does not make a great pet and what happens when you create an animal that does not make a great pet well Maybe looks wise, it looks good, but maybe the temperament is so crappy that the person that buys the dog can't stand it by the time it hits eight months, 12 months, 14 months, and they get rid of it. And what happens when they get rid of it? The dog is rehomed or ends up in a shelter or is euthanized. And if anybody knows anything about dogs, or anyone takes the time to know anything about dogs. There's one thing dogs are more than anything. And that's they're very loyal. And you are their whole world. So some breeds can bounce back. Some personalities can bounce back more than others. But generally speaking, a dog is crushed when they are removed from their owner. So, or a guardian. Whatever you want to however you want to put it. So just please bear that in mind. And <clears throat> I'm sorry this turned into a little rant about, um, about uh, eugenics and backyard breeding, but it's, you know, I could go on and on, but that will be for another conversation. So for now, we're just enjoying our dog walkie. And uh, I know my dogs are. And uh, yeah. After this, uh, Bear might go to the park so he can play for a little bit, run around, run around, because it's a very good opportunity for me to get some of his energy out and uh, without me having to exert myself too much because I can't, I have some limitations, I have limitations of my own and, um, and so yeah. You just, you kind of have to make the best of it, you know? Anyways, you do what you can with your dogs, but you have, you know, you, ha you have to get them exercised one way or the other because people that don't 
walk their dogs or keep them in the backyard or, you know, or a small confined area. Um, you know, it, it's not, it's, it's not the ideal. It's, it's not the ideal. I mean, granted, some people have large backyards and that's a different story. But if we're talking about a small space, I mean, you need to get your dog out. All right, you guys. Sorry to be all over the place. I hope you all have a great night. And uh, we're going to keep walking and hopefully not uh, cross paths with any coyotes tonight. Not that it's a problem. I am not scared of them. And I know that they don't want to hurt me. That they're just looking for dinner. And uh, they're not going to get a Kevin appetizer. Not if I can help it. So, all right. Have a great night. You guys take care. Bye-bye.